This is Indie Watch. We look at indie titles that seem particularly interesting, and then we determine whether or not it's worth looking at or not. We look at past, present, and future indie titles to see whether or not they're worth your time. If you like my content, please like, subscribe, share with your friends, and join my Discord server in the description below. Welcome to the first of many Indie Watch episodes. This title here is called The Machine That Breathes. It's an old school horror game, much in the vein of, say, the original Resident Evil games. Picking and choosing your fights carefully, as well as managing your limited resources and your limited inventory, that's the name of the game here. You'll explore rooms with deadly enemies, deadly traps, and puzzles as well. There are also plenty of items to be found too. Weapons, ammo, character upgrades. There are also some hidden items strewn about the world as well, so keep your eyes peeled. So the story starts up with you, an advanced AI for a digging apparatus. You keep digging, but then you eventually lose contact with the surface. And then soon after, you inevitably shut down. And then you awaken mysteriously with your advanced AI put into a cyborg body. So far in the demo, that's really all there is. Throughout the world, you'll find terminals filled with information, lore bits, and hints on how to proceed through your puzzles. So yeah, the story in the demo is kind of bare bones, and there's no indication that the rest of the game won't be like this. But here's to hoping that more stories told in the full game when it comes out. One thing I should know is that it's not always apparent where you need to go. For starters, you don't really have a goal besides just exploring every room and trying to figure out what happened. Yes, the terminals sometimes give you hints of what you need to do, but at times they can be just as cryptic if unhelpful as well. Ultimately though, I kind of enjoy these games. Along with the constant threat of potentially being killed by enemies, it makes for tense gameplay. Let's talk visual style. The game's art style is very post-apocalyptic meets cyberpunk. It's a very lonely existence, being that you're the only friendly being around, and you're surrounded by a bunch of deadly enemies. The game's own soundtrack is kind of minimal as well. The lack of music in most areas reinforces that lonely feeling, and it's quite effective at that too. So yeah, all in all, the soundtrack, while well minimal, it's pretty decent. I like it. While obviously you can't even pre-order it yet, the game is supposed to come out in 2022, and I definitely look forward to trying this game out when it fully releases. And to all of my Steam Deck subscribers that subscribe to me for Steam Deck content, you must be wondering, does this run on Steam Deck? To answer your question, yes, it does run on Steam Deck. Here's some footage right now. Uh -huh. 